So Crohn's disease is an autoimmune disease in, in which the patient's immune system attacks their small intestine or their colon. Um, we don't know exactly what causes it, but it leads to damage of the intestine, and that damage then causes symptoms in patients, um, and those symptoms can include abdominal pain uh, and diarrhea and, and sometimes uh, rectal bleeding. There are a number of uh, treatment options for patients, but unfortunately not all patients respond. The first uh, line of treatment for uh, patients with Crohn's disease is typically uh, steroids, drugs like prednisone. Uh, we sometimes we use immune suppressive drugs like azathioprine or mercaptopurine or methotrexate. And then there's a group of uh, drugs that we call biologic drugs, and they're, uh, the ones we've used up till now are targeted towards a particular protein called tumor necrosis factor, or TNF. So we talk about these anti-TNF biologic drugs, and the ones we use in practice in patients with Crohn's disease today are Remicade, Humira, and Semzia. About two-thirds of patients will have a clinical response to those TNF blockers, and about one-third of patients will have a remission. And then amongst the patients who respond, if you follow them over the course of a year, uh, half or more of those patients will end up losing response or becoming intolerant to the drug. So there's quite a large group of patients who either don't respond to the TNF inhibitors at all, or they initially respond, but then they lose response. And so, you know, those are the patients where there is a need for new therapies. So our study uh, looked at a, another biotechnology drug uh, called ustekenumab, or Stelera, that uh, targets a different protein in the body besides uh, TNF. So it's not a TNF blocker. It blocks two other proteins called interleukin-12 and interleukin-23, which seem to be important in driving the inflammation of Crohn's disease. And so the idea is when you uh, give use to Kenumab that you can block those proteins and that will then drive down the inflammation of Crohn's. There were two phases to the study. The first phase was looking to induce re, uh, response in patients who had active Crohn's disease in spite of having been treated with a TNF blocker. And we tested uh, three different doses of intravenous use to Kenumab as compared with placebo. And then we looked to see amongst the patients who uh, responded to ustekenumab, if you continued ustekenumab, was, uh, and we were dosing those patients every eight weeks, was continuing ustekenumab as a maintenance treatment among the patients who responded to it, was that more effective than uh, placebo over the next uh, six months or so of therapy? And what we found was that ustekenumab given intravenously was more effective than placebo for making patients better or inducing a clinical response. Uh, and then when you followed those patients uh, who responded to ustekenumab, if they continued ustekenumab, they uh, were more likely to be in remission after uh, about six months of therapy than if patients uh, stopped ustekenumab. Phase three is going on now, and we're testing uh, different uh, types of patients, patients who have failed TNF blockers, patients who have not failed TNF blockers, to see if we can induce response and remission in those different types of patients with, with the dose that we identified was effective. And then we're doing a long-term study where we treat patients for a year or more to see if you can maintain those gains. And we're treating quite a large number of patients so that we can look for even uncommon side effects. I think that this study is really significant for patients because um, we have these uh, uh, kind of three buckets of drugs, steroids, immune suppressants, and anti-TNF biologics, and not all patients respond to those drugs, and if they do respond, it's not always a lasting benefit. And then after that, you're out of options. You really, it's surgery or, or suffering for the patient, and so to have um, a potential new treatment option for patients who have the biggest need, the patients that are out of options, I, I think is always 
a really um, you know, important and exciting prospect for patients and for their doctors.